Okay, so you want to make your first emote, but you don't know exactly where to start or what tools you need to do that. Today, I'm going to teach you guys exactly how I made my first emote and hopefully give you guys the necessary resources and advice you need to get the job done. Today, we're going to be making this guy. If you guys want the original emote files, I will link them in the description below so you guys can work with them, play with them, and just experiment a little bit. All right, guys, let's hop in and make an emote. For those of you guys who don't know me, I'm a designer from Atlanta, Georgia. I'm just starting my content creation journey, but hopefully I can teach you guys some stuff along the way. If you guys have any questions about design stuff, or if you just want to chat, definitely check out the Twitch stream every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. This design that we're actually about to create was made on live stream. Every Tuesday, we start the stream with a creative project and you guys get to be a part of that and help me make something. If you guys want to be a part of these designs, again, please stop by the Twitch. Lastly, if you guys find anything useful or helpful in this video, please leave a like and subscribe. It really does help me out and I appreciate it. Okay, let's make an emote. Okay, so here we are in Adobe Illustrator. I'm just starting out with a 500 by 500 pixel artboard in RGB color space. Now, the reason I like to start with this size is just because once you start working with emotes and stuff, when you export them to, to put them on Twitch or wherever you're putting these emotes, usually they have to be downsized. And if you start a little bit bigger, you can use them for other things like shirts, stickers, mugs, whatever. I'm gonna be designing these in Illustrator because I, I'm just more comfortable with it. And I like making like my emotes and smaller things in vector. That way I can scale them to whatever size I need. If you guys can't afford Adobe Illustrator, some great alternatives are Affinity Designer. It's really cheap. It's like half off right now at the making this video. Also, if you want a free alternative, I recommend Inkscape, but those are the two vector style programs or vector based programs that can help you guys out if you can't afford Illustrator. I'll link all that stuff in the description down below. Okay, so first things first, I'm just looking up some examples. I wanna get like a good basic head shape and then the exact like facial features that I'm trying to use and replicate. So here I'm just kind of looking at uh, different chibis, chibi, chibi, is that how you say it? I don't know. But basically we're just looking through, trying to get an example that kind of has like a similar hairstyle to me or something that we can work with that's like a really good base. But no, right here, I just found one that I really like. Um, he has a really simple like face shape and hairstyle. And that's kind of going to be a common theme throughout this. Try to keep this simple, guys. Like you don't want to overcomplicate it or put too much detail in it, especially because when you shrink this thing down, um, it's going to lose a lot of that detail. So don't stress out. Keep it simple um, and keep it clean. So right here, we're just we're kind of tracing the outline of his head, getting a good face shape. <laughs> and then the same thing with the hair. And all I'm doing for this is just using the pen tool um, to go around and get that shape. And I'm doing it on two separate layers um, so I can move them around and tweak them uh, individually. Okay, so now I'm just picking some colors for my guy. Um, I just picked a skin tone that I thought was pretty basic and you know close to mine. And then a hair, a hair color that you know is brown like mine. When you're making your own emotes, just try to find an example that fits you and then go from there. Okay, so here we're doing the same thing with the face. We're just kind of making some simple shapes around the mouth and eyes. It really helped me to look up Shibi Chibi, whichever one it is, emotions. Right here, we're looking at a laughing one. Feel free to do whatever expression you want. I will say just whatever you choose um, for your expression, you know, laughter, sadness, anger, whatever. Make sure you really over exaggerate this. So for the laughing one, it's gonna be, you know, adding really big tears, you know, mouth really wide open, eyes squinted, head turned back. You just wanna really exaggerate this because at a small size, again, you want it to like pop and you want people to know exactly what they're looking at. So we're just tweaking like where everything is on the face, trying to get it a little bit better. Now I'm adding my beard. With, with these examples that you find, Try not to take exactly what somebody else is doing, you know, tweak them and make them your own. That way you're not stealing someone else's design. So I just keep tweaking and playing. You can kind of see here I'm, you know, blowing the mouth up more, trying to pick colors that are a little bit distinguished from the beard. That way they stand out when you when you zoom it down. You'll see me periodically really shrink it down. And you guys want to do the same thing. Constantly shrink it to see what it looks like at smaller sizes because you want those features and, and details to come through. Right here, I'm looking at some other people's emotes that I think are really good. Juniper Bush 2, shout out to her. She really helped me just kind of critiquing my emotes and walking me through the process. She makes really great stuff and she gave me some guidance when making these. 
Right here, I'm experimenting with a nose. I didn't end up using it just because I thought it wasn't necessary, especially when I shrunk it down. But yeah, just play with stuff, experiment, try different things to really make those emotions come out and to really make it pop at that smaller size. Okay, so right now we're doing the tears. They are oversized right now, but I end up by the end of everything, like on the final version, really making them huge just because they, they weren't showing up as well in that small that smaller version. So that's that's why you want to be looking at it small. That's why you want to over exaggerate these features. I'm just trying to hammer home this point because it's super important when you guys are making emotes that are going to be really tiny. OK, so right here we're using a tool called the contrast tool. I'll link it down below in the description. Again, I want to shout out Juniper Bush and JC Chase. They're the ones that showed me about this tool and it's really as valuable for this. Basically, you upload your emote and it'll show you what it looks like on a light background, a dark background, and it'll show you what it looks like in the exact sizes that you're gonna see it on Twitch, for example. So right here, I'm trying to make an outline. When he was put on a dark background, he just wasn't really reading correctly with my darker brown hair. So I put a white outline around him. Another tip from Juniper, but it just helps separate him from that background and it helps you know what you're looking at. Honestly, after doing this, I think it looked a lot better and I would recommend for any of you guys making emotes to, to also do a white outline. So at first I just tried to trace around my emote to make that outline, the white outline, but it was really sloppy and just kind of kind of jaggedy. So what you can do is just copy your emote and paste it out to the side. I'll show you guys how to do this in more detail in just a second once I open up Illustrator to show you the final product. Okay, so this was kind of the first draft of the emote. We definitely made some tweaks and I'm about to hop in and show you guys exactly what I did. But as you can see, it's just using a lot of simple shapes and colors. I totally think you guys can do this if you're just starting out. Okay, so let's hop into that final version. I'm gonna show you guys how to do the outline exactly and just talk through some of the design decisions that I made. Okay, so here we are with the final product. I'm gonna walk you guys through the outline really quickly and then we'll get into exactly why I chose to, to tweak and change some of the things that I did. Quick tip for you guys, if you wanna know what it's gonna look like on a dark background, just throw a rectangle on a layer below your emote so you can get some separation and see what that white line is gonna look like before you export it. Just remember to turn the back layer off when you do export it to make sure you get that transparency. Okay, so to make this white outline, let me sh let me show you guys. We're going to turn. Actually, we'll just do this right here. So we're going to move over here. Command V. And Command V. Okay, so you have your emotes right here, right? And then what you're going to want to do is, like I just did, copy this guy, paste him off to the side. You're going to click on him. You're going to go up here to object expand, fill and stroke checked, and then you're gonna hit okay. Now, once you do this, you're just gonna come over here to the properties panel. If you don't see properties, you can go to window um, and open properties right here. But basically what you're gonna wanna do is change this fill to white and change this stroke to white as well. Now, what I like to do is up this stroke, 40 seem to be really good for me. So I just did 40 points and and at first you're going to get this kind of like jaggedy, weird looking outline. Just go into the stroke and click this middle one that's kind of rounded. That'll round the edges for you. OK, so now you have this white uh, kind of background and that's exactly what we're going to use. So just drag this. Line it up with your guy. If you're using the art board, then use this tool right here to align it in the middle both ways, horizontally and vertically. Another quick tip, so right here, our background's in front of our guy. Hit control and then the bracket to the left and just keep hitting that and it'll send that white layer or white background back in the layers um, until it's behind your emote. So there you go. And you might wanna you know, tweak this a little bit, get it exactly where you want. That looks pretty good to me. Now you have you know, your emote with the white background and that's exactly how I ended up doing it. I think that way is way easier than trying to trace the entire thing. OK, so now let's go through some of these design decisions that I decided to make. First of all, here, let me pull up. Let me pull up the old emote so you guys can see what we what we ended up changing. 
Okay, so here are the two emotes side by side and I want to walk you guys through the changes that I made and why. So firstly, I, I decided to put an outline on the hair and the beard. It just did a, a little bit better of a job separating him from that white background and the skin, just breaking it up a little bit better. And it adds a little bit of detail. Quick, quick tip for you guys, when you're doing outlines and things of that nature, do them in just a darker color than the color you're outlining. So instead of making this outline black, just make it a dark brown here. I have these highlights or indents in black, but that's just because when you zoom it out really far, it's easier to see. But for the outlines, do them in a darker color than the color that's inside. So some of the features that I did decide to outline, for example, the mouth, I did a black outline around that because I want to separate it from the rest of the emote. And when you shrink it down, it's a little bit easier to see the, the mouth area. I also added teeth because Again, at a really small size, the teeth just really help you see that he's laughing, his mouth is open. I thought it was easier to see than without teeth. And I just think it adds a little bit of detail and looks a little bit better. Thirdly, I added some eyebrows. I think this is more of just a detail thing. You can't necessarily see the eyebrows when it's really zoomed down, but I just like them better and I don't think it takes away from the emote. I think it just adds a little bit at bigger sizes. Okay, and then probably one of the most important things I made these tiers a lot bigger. Again, here, I'll, ju I'll just kind of show you guys, like zooming out here, you can see those tiers are just a little bit smaller and they get lost more in the emote. You can't see them as well as you can on the finished emote on the right. So when you're working with this stuff, you just want to make sure everything comes through at those smaller sizes. And then lastly, I just added some highlights to the tiers right here to make them pop even more. But yeah, guys, that's the finished emote. I do want to show you how to upload it to Twitch really quickly. That way, once you finish your emote, you're able to, to go ahead and use it. OK, so first things first, you're going to want to make sure you turn off this background and then you're going to go to file. Export. Export as. You name it, whatever you want. I'm just going to save this one to the desktop for now. You're going to want to click use artboard. I like to make it a PNG and then just export. I just keep it on high 300 PI or PPI and then <laughs> anti isling none, uh, transparent background and then click OK. OK, so here's our emote right here. You're going to want to go to just twitch.tv. You're going to go to your account you're going to go to creator dashboard. You're going to click on this guy right here and you're going to go to preferences and then affiliate. So right here, you're going to see emotes. You're going to want to click on that. Basically, you'll click on one of these down here, tier one, tier two or tier three, and you'll be able to add your emotes into these boxes. So you're going to need three sizes. You're going to need a 28 by 28 pixel, 56 by 56 pixel and 112 by 112 pixel emotes. The easiest way that I have found to do this is just go right here to your emote, right click, uh, open with and choose photos. Really simple way if you're on Windows. I know you can do this same thing on Mac. Just Google the steps if they're any different than here. So you're just going to go to these three dots right here in the corner, this menu, and you're going to click resize. And you define custom dimensions. And then right here, you can choose exactly what size you want to make it. So you can do 28 by 28, save resize copy. And then let's just do it to desktop again. And then there you go, there's your a little bit smaller one. So this guy goes in the 28 and then so on and so forth. You're going to want to click on this original guy here, resize him. So again, just to show you guys photos, these dots, resize, custom dimensions, put in what you need, save it and then just upload it here to Twitch. And then once you're done, you're going to click save changes, add a code to it if you want, and then you'll upload them for for review. And that's it guys, that's how you make your own custom emote and upload it to Twitch. Emotes are super important for engaging your community and I definitely think just bringing you to the next level and expanding your brand as a creator. Again, if you guys have any questions or wanna talk about emotes, definitely stop by the Twitch. Also, we have an amazing community on Discord and anybody there would be willing to help you out. Guys, go make some emotes, go be creative and have an amazing day, bye. You guys will actually be poop. It'll be perfect. <laughs> no, no. Oh, no. Oh, no.
We need like, <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, I love you guys. I love you guys so much.